Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. We're in statics and we're gonna do problem 4.151, okay? It says, replace the loading by a single resultant force and specify the location of the force measured from point O. Okay, so we got this beam supported by a roller in this side and supported by a pin on this side. And we have this triangular shape load, distribution load. And we have a big load of 15 kilonewtons over here. And we also have a moment at point O of 500 kilonewtons per meter, okay? Now, they want us to find the resultant force. So what we need to do is that we need to add all the forces and then at the end, uh, just specify where this location of this force is, okay? Now, we need to find the force that this triangular distribution load makes and I also need to find the load that this other triangular force does, okay? Now, so this one over here is gonna be my triangular force green, so I'm gonna call it F, triangular G for green, okay? And the one on the left is my F triangular blue, okay? Now, what do we know about the distribution load? How do I make them into a single one force? So I need to find the area of this triangle, okay? So for the green one, I have that the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. So if taking that into account, I have my base, which is 4.5. So I got 4.5 multiplied by my height, which is six kilonewtons per meter. So six divided by two, okay? Now, let's check our calculator. Let's see how much that is. So we do 4.5 multiplied by six divided by two, and that gets me 13.5 kilonewtons. Okay, now what about the blue one? Well, the blue one is really similar but different base. So we have 7.5 for my base, multiplied by the height, which is the same six kilonewtons per meter, and divided by two because it's the same triangular shape, okay? So we have 7.5 multiplied by six, divided by two, and that gets me 22.5, okay? So, uh, I'm gonna redraw our, so FBD, it's a free body diagram, and we will have our beam, really similar like this. Now, I have my 15 kilonewtons in this position. Then I have my green load, distributed load, that is equal to 13.5 kilonewtons. So I'm gonna make it even in our color, which is green. So this guy over here is placed around here, and this is equal to 13.5 kilonewtons. Okay. And then our blue one over here is equal to 22. 0.5 kilo newtons, okay? Now, what else do I have? I also have this moment about my point O that is equal to 500 kilo newtons times meter, okay? So I think that's all we have. So now, this is my point O, just for reference. Now, if we do all the summatory of forces, now, all the forces are in the y direction, so I'm going to do the summatory of forces in the y direction. What do I have? Well, I have negative 22.5 minus 13.5 minus 15. Okay, and let's check that out. How much is this? So we do negative 22.5 minus 13.5 minus 15, and it's equal to negative 51. So we have... 51 kilonewtons going down 
for my resultant force. Okay, since this is equal to my resultant force because I don't have any other forces in the x directions. Okay, now knowing this, and they want us to replace the loading by a single resultant force so it doesn't have an extra moment. So we need to find where, if we were to redraw this system like this, okay? Now our, our resultant force will be acting somewhere and in a place where we don't know yet, but we, we need to find that out. So this one over here is equal to 51 kilo newtons, okay? So how do we find that out? Well, this, this force has to do the same moment that this distribution load had and this 500 kilo newton meter moment, okay? So knowing that, let's erase this over here. We already know this values. So we know that the summatory of moments with at point O has to be equal. Then I have to have my resultant force, which is 51, multiplied by X. So the distance from here to here is my distance X, which I don't know yet. And this moment has to be equal to the moment before when we had this, this system with the distributed loads and the 500 kilonewtons per meter. So I had 500 kilonewtons per meter plus my force of the, my blue triangle, which is 22.5 multiplied by, by the distance. Well, what is this distance? And we never calculated the distance from here to here. Well, we know the distance from here to here, and we know that when we take the distribution load for my blue one, my force is gonna be over here, where the distance from here to here is two over three of my whole length, because the total length will have, so it will be around there. So it's two thirds of this guy. So we have two thirds, of 7.5 okay now we'll also have our green force for the green triangle now what is the distance from point O to this one well we know that we apply the same we know that from the big side is one third so it's one third of the distance well we have 7.5 plus one third of 4.5, okay? So we're gonna multiply our force, which is equal to 13.5, multiplied by 7.5 plus one third of 4.5, okay? Plus, last our 15 kilonewtons so we got 15 kilonewtons multiplied by the distance which is 7.5 plus 4.5 that should give me a total of 12 and let's see what this is equal to so we got that 51 x is equal to so we're gonna take our calculator and we're gonna do 500 so we start 500 plus a multiplication between 22.5 multiplied by two thirds of 7.5 plus 13.5 multiplied by 7.5 plus one third of 4.5 and then plus 15 multiplied by 12 And that gives me a total of 914, okay? Now, if we solve for x, 
This is going to be 914 divided by 51, and this is a total of 17.9 meters. Okay? So we found our resultant force, which is this one, and its direction, so going down, and we also find its position with respect to our beam. Okay? Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions or any comments, just post it down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.